All right. Well, welcome, every morning, everybody. Um, it's a uh, bright uh, and early morning down in Australia, and, and uh, Rosalind Sonnen oh, no. has jumped on with us. She's our guest speaker today, and uh, Rosalind has some background um, personally as well as career-wise working in the um, working in the the, the field of of, of anti or anti aging and um, and uh, with addictions. Hang on, I'm going to mute everybody here. It seemed like we were getting some background. All right. And, uh, and so uh, Rosalind is our, is our guest speaker this morning. We're going to be talking a little bit about addiction. And Rosalind um, called me, or we were talking a, a number of weeks ago, about uh, how to put together um, basically our own little research project on, on what the age pill and what sizzle products can do um, with addictions, she's uh, she's been working in a number of clinics down in Australia, and she's been seeing some results with people. And uh, and so I, I said, well, why don't we get you on the call and uh, and have you share kind of your idea and some of the things, maybe give people a little bit of background on, on addictions and what it actually means because, you know, I think that so many people are, are addicted to different things, and, and when you see it, say addictions, I think everybody thinks of, drugs or alcohol, gambling, some of the common ones, but like you and I were talking about a couple weeks ago, it's a lot more than that. So, so Rosalind Saunders, I'm going to hand the, hand the microphone over to you. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Uh, yes, so just going back over, the reason I reached out to you was, um, I was no, because of how I noticed with my own emotions since taking the age pill, and um, I study in this area and do a lot of research in this area of addiction. And my passion is, Kurt, is how we can help people with addictions. Addiction is a tough gig to be in. It's also a tough gig when you've got uh, family members in addiction. We then become quite sick around them as well, which is called codependence, which I'll go into. Just a little bit of backstory, Kurt. Uh, so I was born to drug addicted parents. I'm from a small town in New Zealand. So both my parents were addicts. My father was dead at 47 from alcoholism. And my mother suffered a stroke at 55 and she was addicted to Valium prescription medication to cope with the alcoholism. So you can see how the family members get pulled in. Uh, they both smoked between 60 to 80 cigarettes daily each as well. My parents were both very enterprising business people. However, their addictions killed them. But what I believe is it's the unresolved issues and not being able to manage their emotions around their lifestyle choices and around their, they couldn't manage their emotions. That was what they went to that eventually killed them. I then went on to, because I've been, I've been living in this toxic soup myself, that was what I knew. I married an alcoholic at 20. And then I went on and had four children, of which three for the last two decades have been heavily into addiction. Three of my now adult children uh, have been into the addiction, all addictions. So it's been prisons, rehab, psych wards, open heart surgeries. It's been the whole gamut of, for three of them living in addiction from marijuana to bulimia to uh, heroin to cocaine to ice, all of the above. My point is that addiction goes on generation after generation, So, which is what I'd like to explain a bit about. So that's why my passion is. It's been in my family for generations, and I decided that the buck's going to stop with me and at least try and steer the wheel back the other way, um, so which is why I do what I do. So uh, addiction is the greatest social problem on the planet today. It causes damage, heartbreak, and emotional and physical scarring. It breaks up families and carries self-destruction in its wake. 
Addiction is also responsible for a large part of the crime and consequently our prison population. Addiction underlies several of our most costly medical epidemics, type 2 diabetes and childhood obesity to name them. And addiction has no respect for age, gender or race and cuts across every socio-economic classification. So what I'd like to go into now, Kurt, is just one of the six, or I think I've actually got seven here, of the big addictions. And as you said, it's not just the drugs and alcohol. There's lots of addictions out there. We're actually a very addictive society. We're wanting a quick fix. We're wanting instant gratification. And we're kind of running from our emotions, which is what I'll talk about as well. So we have drugs. This includes prescription drugs and illicit drugs. We're getting a huge amount of people now that have started their downward spiral into the depths of addiction, um, going into heroin, ice, cocaine, and they started on prescription medication. We have alcohol, which is society's pressure relief valve. Uh, it's used, we use it for everything. In my opinion, alcohol is our biggest drug problem on the planet. The biggest of all of them. One being because it's socially acceptable. We use it for weddings, we use it for births, we use it for deaths, we use it when we come home from work just to unwind. It's, it's our legal go-to is alcohol. And there's a bottle shop on every corner. Food, overeating, binging, anorexia, bulimia, diet control, eliminating food. There's a huge um, problem, as we know, with food addiction. I call obesity food addiction. We're using food as our go-to to stuff down our emotions. People. The people addiction is called codependency. This is where I fit into it. My addiction, my drug of choice was my codependency and my, my actual drug was my husband. I had left him ten time, five times, I beg your pardon, over ten years, back and forward, yo-yoing into a relationship. I'd get out of it. The pain of withdrawal was so bad, I'd go back into it. Now, I wasn't using a needle. I wasn't using a bottle. However, my codependency took me to my deathbed in the year 2000 on January the 15th. I was at the hospital begging to die. I couldn't do it anymore. I was no different from a heroin addict at their absolute bottom. So codependency is my uh, passion because I don't think it's understood enough out there. I don't think, and I don't think people realise the fatality of it, of people addiction. This doesn't have to mean it's your partner or husband. There's people addiction to friendships. There's people addiction to family members. And there's a lot behind all of that. There's people addiction to over um, codependency within parents and children this codependency within bosses at work. So codependency is a real biggie and in my opinion it underlines all of the other addictions. If people clean up their addictions, for example if an alcoholic stops drinking, unless they clean up the codependency which is the thoughts and unresolved issues and emotions for why they went to that drug, then all they're going to do is cross addict. They might go from alcohol to gambling or a lot of um, alcoholics go from alcohol to food. So that's um, very, very important is codependency. Money, we have money. So there's gambling, there's shopping, there's being in debt. We're, we're brought into the lie that it's okay to be in debt. And we all know what it's like when we look at our bank statement and it's in debt or we get in over our head through mortgages, through shopping, through any sorts of um, 
ways we use money where it's not really a healthy way for us to do it. We're spending money that we haven't got, which then again causes us stress and we look for relief in things outside of us to numb down those stresses inside of us. Uh, the sex and sex pornography and using sex as a drug is huge out there as well. Uh, with nowadays we've got the neuro uh, neuro addictions coming in, which is technology. So using technology like a digital heroin. We see now, we walk down the street, there's people on their phone. One thing that I feel very sad about is seeing so many young children on phones or on iPads. Um, I, I think it, it saddens me greatly to see that. And the number one thing with uh, addiction is it's disconnection. So these children are learning to disconnect and the parents from the children are using that mechanism to babysit them or keep them entertained, which is disconnection as well. So, um, so they, those are the five or six or seven, I think, main big ones out there in society and they're everywhere. And, um, but I also like to look into the lifestyle addictions uh, that we have become very normalized in our society. Um, so for the likes of this work addiction, which in a lot of cases, a person that works is glorified. Look at, you know, look at them, they work 80 hours a week, how wonderful. And often that's addiction and they're not, in, not with their families, they're doing all sorts of things. And so a lot of these um, lifestyle or socially accepted addictions have become very normalized, integrated in society. So like you said at the beginning of the call, Kurt, um, there's all of these underlying addictions that are not being brought out. And that's what I want, I would like to focus on as well. So, um, and also we, we can become addicted to our thoughts and emotions. The neuroscientists are, are coming up with this now. These, we become addicted to anxiety. We become addicted to fears. And by the time we are 35, our autonomic system has, nervous system has actually, they're in our cells, it's in our bodies, our issues are in our tissues and we that becomes a mouse's wheel of being addicted to those. So we the addiction say to anxiety or drama or fear that when that autonomic nervous system is not getting fed, when our issues are not getting fed, it screams out and the autonomic nervous system goes out emotionally goes out and searches for things within people, places and things to um, bring situations into our life to keep that, keep feeding that addiction to anxiety. So we are very much, now the neuroscientists are coming up with, we are very much too addicted to our thoughts, feelings and emotions. So I think what we need to do is look, uh, deal with um, addiction in hol a holistic way. It's not, it, there's lots of components in dealing with it and it needs all of the components. So obviously we need to um, s s abstain from, obviously the first thing is awareness and uh, ad we admit that we have a problem with it when we can't stop it. I'm, the, the um, actual uh, definition of addiction is any addiction, substance related or not, is continuing a behaviour that despite the negative consequences in our lives, it, we, we continue to do it over and over and over. We promise ourselves we're not going to do it again and we do this. And that can be in the form of many of these what society has termed as um, socially acceptable things. And then, for example, a person can be addicted to busyness and drama, and that actually is glorified in society. They're so busy, they're always doing things. They're just on this mouse's wheel. So you can see how that feeds that person for their self-worth. 
I'd like to refer, refer to Dr. David Hawkins. He's a world-renowned metaphysicist. He was firstly a doctor, then a scientist, then became a metaphysicist. And he, he has a scale of emotions for consciousness. And he say, says that addiction, which is full of shame, guilt, fear, and hopelessness, actually has the frequency of about 20. So uh, for, a, for a meaningful and hopeful life, it, we should sit around 310 to 400 and love frequency at about 500. So you can see how low these people are, their frequency is. Their frequency, and we're all energy, so the frequency of this hopelessness, this shame, this guilt, this fear. Getting out of addiction is a hard, hard thing to do. Which brings me to what, what brought me to, the, to thinking about this. Since I've been myself being on the age pill, um, and as specifically 12, I find that I'm calmer, I find that I've got more courage, and I've done a lot of work on my own addiction, so I'm not, I'm not at the bottom of the addiction cycle. However, I noticed a big difference in my own emotions. And you know how we, we with chromatography, and I've seen the photos of someone before they've taken the age pill and afterwards we measure their frequency. So I got to thinking, if this can do this for me, and also for many people that through me have now got on the age pill, the main thing they come back with is they feel calmer. So if this can do this for me, I wonder if this could be a component because of the potency of this um, su these supplements, which I, I think you've coined or someone's coined supplemental, supplemental uh, psychiatry or psychology. If we could give these addicts this to just raise their frequency a little bit. Last year alone in your country in America, 1.5 million people went to treatment for addiction. With 80% relapsed within 60 days, so we have a huge relapse problem as well. A lot of that is because once they get off the substance, uh, that they don't actually, they think they'll feel better, but they don't for a long, long time. So this is where I'm thinking if we, if the, if the nutritional supplementaries as such as the caliber and the frequency of the age pool, if that could be given to them in high doses, how that would help them stay away from relapse. It would just lift them that little bit more, that frequency, while they're putting the new normals into their lives, the new thoughts, feelings, and behaviors into their life and integrating back into a new normal in their lives because that's what has to be created. Roz, you know, as you're talking, one of the things that I'm thinking about is that, you know, for me, um, my addiction is, is really my work. I, I, I jump into it uh, head first and both feet, both arms all at the same time. And, and uh, it, really, it really is. I, I mean, I, I, I have no problem admitting that's, that's my addiction. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like everything, Kurt, every, everything, there's nothing wrong with most things out there but across the line and when we're addicts we either we take things to the extreme we go from one end to the other we're never in the in the balance in the middle as being addicts right, right. well and I and i think you know the the thing is sorry. sorry the thing is that that um you know a lot of scientists now they're saying that the reason that we're seeing, and this is where I, I kind of relate it to the, to the H bill and to sizzle products and, and probably why you're seeing some results is that when we take a look at, at um, what we're doing with our babies, with our infants is we're giving them infant formulas. We're giving them food Absolutely. that's loaded with sugars. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And what did you, you see that sets up the same pleasure centres in their little brain? So they go on and on and on, and let alone the foods that we're eating. Absolutely, Kurt. Yeah, and then what it does is it, it, it creates the same effect in their little brains that, that a heroin addict has when yes. they're 20 or 30 years old. They're having the same effect, and it's coming from sugar. It's, uh, it's bouncing through the same receptor sites. That's it, absolutely. It lights up the same receptor sites in the brain. So they're calling sugar children's alcohol. Yep. We know and that so now laden with it, it's hidden, and carbs turn into sugar. So giving, giving children a lot of carbs and a lot of that sugary food, when I see them out there, I go, oh my goodness, they are already set up. Put an iPad in there hand at two or three or I've seen children at one you see they're all around and then their parents could be kind of the, the household like mine that could be addicted the parents could be going off to alcohol or work addiction can you see how it's about epigenetics and it's environmental they're saying that addiction is is only six percent genetics the rest is epigenetics and environment and learned behavior. We learn off our parents what they did. We learn to cope the way they did. We watch how they're coping. We watch how they're living. And we, like I did, I created an absolute blueprint of my family life when I married an alcoholic at 20. After three years prior to that, having lost my father, four years I think, to alcohol, now, you wouldn't think anybody in their right mind would go and marry an alcoholic after living through all that. However, my emotional system, those emotional frequency went out, and when I met my husband um, all those years ago, I, there could have been a hundred young men, guys in the room, I would have picked him because he matched my programming. He matched what was normal to me. It yeah. sounds insane that that's what you do. But I just yeah. recreated the whole thing. Then, because of my children, when I finally left, my our marriage dissolved. I finally, after going back and forward five times, ten years, and all the drama, etc., my children were in their teenage years, so they started using. Started they most of them started on marijuana, and they wanted more and more and more. They were looking for relief in the environment that we had at home, just like I did. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that I was going to say is that when we take a look at it, I mean, without getting really deep into the science, you know, it creates a problem with the receptor sites when yes. you're when you're giving that that baby, when you're getting that infant and that young child uh, real sugary foods. What it does is the body actually creates more receptor sites, and then now you have to satisfy, you have to fill those receptor sites. So that's what creates the craving, and that's what creates the the uh, uh, addiction for whatever it happens to be in, and whatever uh, source of pleasure it is. And and like Roz is saying, I mean, it could be anything really. Like in my case, being work, and it fills those receptor sites. And mm -hmm. and and so when you take a look at with uh, with the age pill, you know, it removes the glycation. The glycation is is caused by sugar. And again, we take a look at what we're talking about here. Sugar uh, caused the problem with the addiction. Sugar caused the glycation. And that's probably part of it. But then the other thing that they're saying is that because the, the, uh, the, the age pill with the, with the ingredients that it has, um, what it does is it, it activates, it reactivates uh, the stem cells in the body and the stem cells are, are the, the little repairmen that go and fix your cells. And so, so what they're saying is, is that it fixes the, it fixes the dopamine receptor sites. It fixes the neurotransmitter receptor sites in the body. And, and, and it's all, it's all because of that. So um, now Rosin, we've talked a lot about addictions. We've talked about kind of the history of it. You know, we've talked about what causes it so that people got an idea of uh, what it is. Give us a little idea on, on what you're proposing um, so that we can get people to help participate in what you're doing. Because I know you're looking at, you have a survey that you'd like to, to email to people that, that, um, so that you can actually uh, put together a database 
of, yes. of, of, of people so you can show that, hey, look, there's, uh, there's some preliminary evidence here that, that the age pill can, can help people. So, so if you'd want to explain a little bit about what you and I talked about with, with what we're, we're proposing here. Thank you, Kurt. Yes, so it got me to thinking and I thought if I could do a survey and get some data, get some evidence on how this can help people, as I said, it's not the only thing, but if we could just help them to feel better, then they can stick to their programs and stick to their other protocols as well. Um, so. Um, I put together a survey, um, people if they choose they could, um, and it would involve three months, 90 days of taking 12 age pills a day and of course drinking the water etc. So I put together a survey where they would fill that out every, every day. And it would only be, the information would only be available to me, I'm doing it exactly, specifically to collect data. Not as a marketing right. thing, nothing else. It's specifically just to collect data so I can come back and show evidence to, of helping for this. Um, to maybe addiction clinics, etc. And of course remember that when addicts, when we're at our lowest, where our health isn't good at all, Kurt, we're usually very, very dehydrated. Our gut microbiome is like a toxic soup. Our guts, everything is out of whack, as you said, our cells. So getting this, this, um, this high potency superfoods into them for their brain chemistry and for their, for their physical self as well. So I want to collect data for that so I can go to maybe addiction clinics in itself. The reason, another reason it got me onto it is two of my daughters who are just sort of looking to doing a bit of work on their addictions after 20 years of, of very heavy addiction. Um, so I have, they have been trialling my idea for the last two weeks. They've been on 12 age pills a day. They've been filling out my survey. I've also had them on a probiotic for their gut microbiome each day. Uh, one of my daughters put a post in the World Sizzle team. She rang me the other day and she said, Mum, um, she said, I actually even feel like I'm on drugs because she's not using any alcohol or any substances now, but it's giving her, she feels, um, she feels good. She feels good about life again. Now, I'm not saying a silver wow. bullet, but she's, She's, I know because I can tell by their voices and I haven't seen much of my children over the last 20 years because of their addiction. I would do anything towards helping them getting recovery, but I would not do 1% towards adding to their addiction or enabling. So I wasn't the parent that would give them money, etc., which is a, is a tough gig on its own. So that was one of my daughters and, and she said, I just feel so much better. And my other daughter, I asked her today, she's been on it a fortnight as well, and so I asked her to just text me just some bullet points, and she's put um, changes in energy, more positive, she's able to take more risks. She actually even went to the movies with her girlfriends the other night. I haven't seen her do that for 20 years. Um, calm feelings and stressful times and weight loss. And then she sent another text later, an add-on, focus was easily directed and maintained. Wow, perfect. So that's just you know, and if you can help your family and, and you can help your, your loved ones, um, you know, and help yourself at the same time, uh, what better thing. You know, so, so Rosalind, I know we're getting close to the bottom of the hour. Well, we're actually past the bottom of the hour, but we got started late. Um, you know, so, so if somebody has an addiction, um, and you're going to go to a, to a clinic and share kind of the data with them. People don't have to be, a, they, don't, they don't have to worry about, oh, you're going to share my name. You're going to say, hey, here's Kurt Pisnick, you know, contact him. None of that, none of that, right? I, I would, I'm highly, highly confidential. I, that's one of my values on those sort of things. Keep, you know, keep, I, it would be very done with much integrity. I would be the only one that would see um, the results. Uh, nobody else would even see it and there'll be no names on it. 
at all. It's purely to collect data, to give me evidence, and I've already seen evidence with my daughters just in a fortnight. However, we know they've, they've got to um, you know, hold that. Um, but absolutely, I give you my word. Okay. So, Roslyn, um, as we get ready to close the call here, would you share your, your email address with everybody so they can get in touch with you and, and, and your phone number as well in case they want to call you? But, but yeah, share your, your email address and your phone number. Okay. So, my email address is Roslyn, R-O-S-L-Y-N, at Roslyn, R-O-S-L-Y-N, Saunders, S-A-U-N-D-E-R-S, dot com, dot A-U. Perfect. And so it's Roslyn at Roslyn Saunders, whoops, Roslyn at Roslyn Saunders dot com, dot A-U. Yes, and I'm also on Facebook as well, under Roslyn Saunders. I have a couple of business groups there as well to do with addiction, so you'll find me there. My phone number, Kurt, is plus six one four three nine three three nine one six six. Could you repeat the phone number again? Plus six one. That's the international code for Australia. Four three nine. Three three nine one six six. All right. Well, perfect. You know, Rosalind. Um, after ninety days, so it's June. Uh, it's June twelfth uh, now. So ninety days is going to put us down around sometime in September. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we plan on maybe like around the first of October, um, getting you back on, and and hopefully we got enough people participating with you that uh, that you'll have some data that you can share sometime in October. I'd love that, Kurt. I'm very passionate about this. Yeah. Thank it's you. something that we really need to take care of uh, in our country. I, I just posted something this morning that, you know, the drug companies are saying that suicide rates are, are going up, up, up. They're skyrocketing in our country. And the drug companies are saying, oh, we need a new drug. And I'm like, <laughs> no, we don't. We don't need a new drug. We need to fix the problem. Fix the underlying issues and with healthier alternatives, exactly why I'm doing this survey. Um, I'm just delighted to have come across something that I feel is there's nothing out there like that, like it, like you have said, and I've listened to your doctor's calls and the other people that have shared their information. I think we were ready for something, a supplement with more kick in it, Kurt. Yeah. And yeah. I think the addicts have probably been on, like my girls have been on supplements, but it's not doing enough for them. And everybody's out there looking to get to feel better, but what we need to do is better at fe get better at feeling and being able to manage those feelings. And, of course, if they're too topsy-turvy, the number one reason we go to addiction is we cannot manage our emotions. Like you're saying, we fill spaces with work, with shopping, with sex, with sugar, with you name it. Yeah, exactly. Well, All right, well, Rosalind, thanks for, thanks for being our guest this morning on the call, and I, I appreciate you getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. And, and sharing uh, this abundance of information, I, it's, it's, it's really helpful. And I'll, I'll post this on um, Facebook so you'll have it in a YouTube video. I'll have that done in the next half hour. So by the time you wake up in the, in the morning, you'll have it. Thank you very much. Very appreciative Thanks, of being everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.